So in the previous episode, we compared chords to steps uh, in a staircase. Now let's pretend that chords in a song are like bricks in a wall. It turns out there's much more to bricklaying than you would initially think and there are lots of different ways in which you can uh, arrange the bricks when you're building a wall and I kind of stumbled on this subject uh, through a lecture of mathematician John Conway who recognized that the particulars of bricklaying are actually quite intriguing from a mathematical point of view and he used to uh, take his students out of the classroom just to look at buildings in the neighborhood and compare the ways in which the bricks were arranged in these walls and I'll put some links uh, in the description of this video. It's actually quite a fascinating subject and once you've dug into it you're much more likely to appreciate the different methods of uh, bricklaying, uh, especially once you start recognizing them in buildings uh, which you come across. So one of the most common ways uh, to do it is the so-called stretcher bond um, and I'll make a drawing. Looks like this. And this method is uh, very simple and also very useful if you want to make a wall that's quite thin because this one is only as thick as half a brick. Uh, so it cannot be really used uh, on its own, but it's very useful if you, uh, for instance, want to have an outer wall of a, a building which looks like this. Uh, and you have a supporting structure on the inside of the building. And this also happens to be the way in which the bricks are arranged on the front cover of the album uh, The Wall by Pink Floyd. So I figured what if you just took these two layers of bricks but instead of bricks uh, you have chords. So I just put uh, chord symbols uh, on the bricks uh, like this. There we go. And you just kind of read it like a port chord progression from left to right. So there's always, uh, there are always two chords playing at the same time, but at uh, the moment when the upper chord, uh, upper chord is changing into another chord, the lower chord is uh, remaining the same. And also the other way around. Once the lower chord uh, changes, in this case from E minor to B minor, uh, the upper chord, uh, stays the same, stays a D. And it turns out that this way of uh, thinking about it can actually be quite uh, fruitful and just as with uh, bricklaying there are lots of different ways in which uh, you can do it. So then came the question how to separate these two layers uh, of chords because if I just play two chords at the same time like this we just hear it as one a slightly more complex chord. Uh, so I play the lower half uh, with my left hand upper half with my right hand and I play them as uh, broken chords so one note at a time and I give them uh, both uh, a separate rhythm or uh, rather a separate speed uh, because they play in a rhythm of two against three that means that in the time that my right hand plays two notes my left hand plays three notes and also I gave them uh, opposite motion. So the left hand plays in a uh, kind of ascending motion from low to high. And the right hand plays in the descending motion from high to low. So when you combine all that together, you get a kind of uh, texture, which uh, sounds like this. And my right hand will be the first to change chord and then my left hand will change my right hand again and so on. Uh, sounds like this. And in the case of this song, I play it with uh, pizzicato strings and piano, so you can get this sound. And I also 
also use this technique to kind of gradually modulate from one key signature uh, to another because there's always one uh, chord which remains the same. You can uh, kind of gradually modulate with the other chord and it doesn't sound so sudden or uh, unexpected. Well, so much for bricklaying. I call this song uh, Curiosity uh, because it's kind of an ode to curiosity. Uh, not NASA's uh, robot which is driving on the surface of Mars, but curiosity as in uh, the desire to know things or the motivator to investigate. And at the end of this song I put in a fragment uh, of an interview with a physicist called uh, Richard Feynman who was specialized in uh, quantum mechanics among other things and here he, he talks specifically about curiosity. song it can be really nice to incorporate uh, field recordings which basically means uh, sounds recorded outside of the recording studio and that can be anything uh, from ambient sounds in nature or people talking or uh, traffic sounds uh, or whatever and I always have my mobile phone with me and then I can record the sounds uh, when I'm in a nice environment and bring them in and in this case I also used it at the end of this song and I think it adds a lot of uh, depth and uh, ambience sounds like this. And after that I incorporated sounds from a children's uh, playground since uh, curiosity is often associated with young children and it's something that I believe uh, should be stimulated as much as possible. Actually, field recordings is quite a deep uh, subject in itself. It's also used in avant-garde music or contemporary classical music, film scores, experimental music and ambient music and so on. So perhaps one day I'll make a video specifically about that subject. Uh, for now, if you have any suggestions about related topics or thoughts on the matter, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching this video and hope to see you again with the next episode. Cheers.